Welcome to Kiki's Chat Show. Today is the 5th of May, 2021. Today's topic is something that has perked a lot of people's interest. And we are going to talk about land issues. We're not going to waste time at all. But while I'm waiting for my guest, we have different time scales, and my guest got a little bit confused about the time, so he's getting ready to come on. And while we're waiting for that, I can tell you about him. My guest is a very important man, a seasoned lawyer. He is a managing partner of Janda Asma and Co. He's director of the African Economic Development Center. As a speaker, he's been a speaker at the inaugural African Leadership for Women Forum. Kofi Asma is co-chair for the Ghanaian Hungarian Business Council. He's also a serial entrepreneur and deeply committed to narrowing the divide between developed countries and emerging nations by promoting more foreign direct investment from the US and Europe into Africa. Uh, he's a director of the African Economic Development Center of Atlanta. He's a member of the American Bar Association, Ghana Bar Association, International Bar Association, and a proud member of the Rotary Club. He's still trying to connect. I don't I don't know if he's having technical issues because I can see him, but I can't seem to be able to click on it. So in the meantime, I can tell you that a few people have come to me and have complained bitterly about situations in Ghana with land issues. Some people have had their land encroached upon. A gentleman, had his land, he'd bought this land. He'd actually, he was advised to put a wall around it. So he put a wall around it. And because he lives here, he was thinking that was going to be his retirement home. So he had one or two years more and then he'd start building so that they would go. Now to build a place, you need a designer. Apart from the designer, you need draftsmen and all of these things. And sometimes people like to, because they're in retirement, spend some time in Ghana and some time here. So he hadn't got to that point yet, but he was on his way. And he was planning to go and build his dream home. One day, um, somebody called him and asked him, the person that he bought the land with because they bought it side by side. He bought his land and his friend bought his land out. So his friend from America went to Ghana and realized that people were encroaching on their land, lands. So he called him, let's, let's just call him James. So he calls James and he says, well, James, somebody is encroaching on my land and yours. Um, do you want to come and you have to do something? We have to do something. This was three years ago. The matter, the person had started building half on the James's friend's land. So this matter is still in court. They're still having discussions. Um, um, in the meantime, I don't know how the guy does it, but he's, he's still the encroacher is still building people are saying oh it's okay you know because they some people know who this guy is and the whole thing is a big problem 
the person who sent him the land is who sold him the land has allegedly resold the land to somebody else all of that is in court um there are also land guards on the land now that is ridiculous because how can there be somebody has put land guards on the land it's impossible it's ridiculous it's crazy but it's happening so everyone seems to be frustrated now the story that i've told you there are different types of the story and so we are at the point where we need to talk about it with a lawyer we need to talk about it with somebody who knows what he's about so that we can deal with it basically and that's where we're at now if you have issues and you want to comment on it you can i will see some of your comments and i will say it to him if you want to but please at this point while i'm on air you can't be sending me whatsapps and all of that it just doesn't work but you can send comments in the comment section so that we can try and answer all of our problems i have some too we all have some everybody who is abroad who is working hard has plans of going back to um the country and they have plans of you know settling in their retirement some people are not even in retirement age they just want to settle now but with all of the shenanigans that's going on regarding land no one actually knows what to do so welcome mr asthma to the show we can see you hello you can see me yeah great thank you very much for having me again no that's no problem we should be saying thank you merci beaucoup so i've given them i've given a background while you were struggling to get in i've given a background of <laughs> the <laughs> stories and i need to kind of i can't give background again because we will then make people lose the plot and go home so i need to immediately ask you a question somebody wanted to know how long you have been doing legal work regarding land so that before we proceed okay thank you very much candy um i've been um practicing for almost 20 years and i've been doing land for a, 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 a pro approximately the same period of time so i'll say i have about 20 years experience dealing in land issues um my law firm jandas manco um represents a number of um institutions um including international banks the standard chartered bank the standard bank group which is stand big group and at least um five other banks in ghana uh as well as toyota and samsung and a number of big corporate organizations and an area that we provide services in very frequently is advising on land issues um doing due diligence so if you go to the bank and you want a facility for example um we will be the ones who will conduct due diligence and certify to the bank by way of legal opinion um whether or not that land is suitable for a mortgage um we we have a team in house that in addition to to that also does um um registrations so we will do registrations up to the land title um certificate level um 
So we have a lot of uh, experience, and I personally have been involved in these um, procedures um, right from when um, I started practice. It's an area in which I have a lot of interest. I also have my own investments, and so I have practical experience um, that I'm willing to share with um, viewers and listeners today. Thank you very much. Thank you. My actual first question is, do people, you know, I mean, there, there is, there are, we're talking about this new land laws, but the question that burns in my mind is, do people even know the old land law? You know, what is the old land law and why is there a new land law? Okay. Um, well, I think for you to fully appreciate um, why there's a need for us to have um, new land laws and why the old land laws may not be suitable for us, I will look at... Um, the first um, land law that we used as a country, that's the Land Registry Act of 1962. Um, by this law, we um, essentially, if you bought a piece of land or you acquired land, um, you were allowed to go and plot um, or register your interest in the land with the Lands Commission. Um, this means that you didn't have to prove that you had actually got title to the land. You only had to establish the fact that you had an interest in the land. So you will realize that as a result, there are multiple registrations in lands that were acquired um, um, right from the independence, in fact, in the pre-independence era, right through the independence era. Um, and because of these challenges, um, the PNDC law of uh, 1982, um, the land title um, law, which came into force, so, um, was essentially um, promulgated because for the first time in the history of Ghana, um, you could actually register and acquire title to the land. So at the end of your registration process, you would have what we call the land title certificate. And that land title certificate was um, the proof that you had title to the land that you had acquired. And um, anyone who wanted to challenge, because of the processes of registration, so for example, during the process of acquiring a land title certificate, you are required to make a publication to the general public. So what that means is that if anyone has an interest in that land, um, they are required to caveat your registration of the land uh, within the period with, within which it's published in the newspapers. And if there's no caveat, then um, the land title registration division would go ahead and register your interest or your title to the land. Um, so the, the law brought this process of actually conducting due diligence and using modern equipment to make site plans. Under the old law, uh, most of the site plans were manually done. Today, under the new laws that we have, we have um, what we call the bar coded site plan, which uses the highest form of um, digital um, equipment to capture the coordinates of the land in a very scientific manner. And it improves accuracy and prevents um, duplication and um, the errors that came 
from using the old types of side plans. Now, um, as you can you can tell, because land issues are continually evolving, um, and ownership of land um, is fraught with a lot of issues, the laws have to be regularly revised to reflect um, innovations that we have. So what has happened now is that when the, the land title law was passed, the Lands Commission continued to operate under the old act, even though there was a new law. So you could register your interest either by going to the Lands Commission or by going to the Land Title Registry. Um, it, there was a need to harmonize the operations of these two institutions. And so um, under our current laws and um, under our current disposition, the Land Commission and the Land Title Registry have been put together in one place or the processes have been streamlined so that there's one particular um, um, body that supervises all land registrations. And I'm speaking primarily in, um, for the cities, that's uh, Accra and um, Kumasi. Um, these are the key areas where the land title law operates. Um, so the whole country is not fully covered yet, as and when um, the areas are declared as land title registration zones, then you can get a land title to cover it. So as we can see, it's not completely um, resolved or land issues, um, even though there's a vast improvement now. There are still certain areas that need to be addressed. And I guess it's also because of the financial implications of having the whole country um, zoned and fully registered under the Land Title Registry Act. Um, eventually, we will get there. I know that there's been a digitization process, so um, which has which lasted for almost six months. Uh, we are now getting to the end of the digitization processes, which means that all the records um, at the Lands Commission are being made digital. So no longer will we be using manual records. Um, we will be using only digital records. There's a lot of improvement, a lot of changes. And because these changes have to be supported by law, that is why there's a need to make revisions to the law. Um, it's a continual process and a journey. So um, it, I believe that it will take us, you know, about a year or two to clearly see the benefits. But I can say that a lot of work has been done um, at the Land Title Registry Division um, to modernize the registration of title to land, and um, we need to commend um, the government and um, other donor agencies that have supported this process of land title and land reforms in Ghana generally. Okay, so you said a lot of things, and I hope people have taken it all in about the digital digitizing of land and all of that. But you see, people have serious questions and one of the questions is for example you have your land your land was bought in 1975 you haven't done anything maybe you've even put a wall around it just to say this is my land or you've marked it this is my land and then um you find out that somebody has been selling your land has been sold three times your land and and i'll tell you what is bothering people at the moment you see because let us okay there is this problem where we have people have land people live abroad or people give money to their siblings or cousins or uncle or mother's brother especially 
to buy the land. Somewhere in the melee, the land is bought, but all sorts of things happen. And the problems are because people don't go to see lawyers to get this thing sorted out. So that is one point which we shall come to towards the end of this discussion. But the biggest problem people have, which people have been talking about, which made me set up this show, is that people may have land, People's fathers may have bought land and then someone else comes along and he doesn't see any action on the land. Suddenly he will put land guards on your land and these land guards are attacking people. Are these land guards legal? Okay. Um, so I'll start with the question. Um, of course, under the 1992 Constitution of Ghana, um, no one is allowed to have um, security services or private security services unless this is regulated by law. I mean, clearly, the scourge of land guards or the menace of land guards is not legal. Uh, but unfortunately, it's very pervasive, especially in our cities, in Accra, particularly. Um, so the issues that come up with uh, or that require immediate redress would definitely be how to eliminate the menace of land guards in our country. But even before we get to the point where we can address the issue of land guards. I see that um, you have rightfully pointed out that a lot of the issues um, that we face and a lot of the co court cases in Ghana today are related to land. And the reason why we have this challenge is because most people do not use the services of lawyers. Um, given that I'm speaking mainly to um, Ghanaians in the diaspora, in the UK, in the US, in Europe, um, I would like to use this platform to urge my fellow Ghanaians to use the services of lawyers, well-qualified lawyers, especially where they have experience in land and real estate issues. The reason why I say that is because if they are buying or if you're buying property in the US or in the UK or in Europe, you cannot close the sale without using the services of lawyers. And indeed, in our own laws in Ghana, under the conveyancing decree, of 1973, no land transaction, no property transaction, no transfer of land or alienation of land or property can be done without using the services of a lawyer. For some reason, most people seek to avoid using the services of a lawyer, as you have rightfully pointed they refer to family members or to their friends or sometimes even to absolute strangers. And they seem to have a lot of belief in the ability of these persons to successfully close the purchase of that property when really the law does not even allow you to conclude that process without using a lawyer. Indeed, if you go through a registration process, you will realize that there is a space on each document which must be stamped or signed by a lawyer. And because there's that requirement, what sometimes is done is that those documents which have not been prepared by a lawyer or which were completed without the services of a lawyer are put together 
And then at the Lands Commission stage, a lawyer is invited to stamp and sign off on those documents to make it legible for registration. But this is not what the law envisages. What the law wants us to all to do is to use the services of a professionally qualified lawyer. Now, what will the lawyer do for you? If the lawyer is going to assist you, he must first and foremost conduct searches. He will conduct searches at the Lands Commission, at the Land Title Registry, at the Survey and Mapping Division. So he will do at least three searches and will get official search results. The importance of these search results officially obtained can never be undermined because they may be called in if there's a dispute on the land and if that dispute ends up in court. The purpose of the search is to establish who is the owner or the lessor or who can alienate that land to you as a purchaser. Now, if you don't go through that step and you later on encounter difficulties, you have no one else to blame but yourself. Please do not blame Ghana and do not blame anyone else but yourself because the law requires you to use the services of a lawyer. Now, after you do the search and it is established that the person who is going to sign off the documentation to you, the person who is going to sell the land to you, is the rightful person to do so, there are other searches that may need to be conducted. For example, you need to look at the zoning of the land. Not all lands are zoned for residential purposes. Some lands are zoned for commercial purposes, some for industrial purposes, some for schools, for hospitals, for cemeteries, and so on and so forth. Now, because you may not have used the services of a lawyer, you may, you may go ahead and purchase a land which is zoned, for example, for industrial purposes. And you will find out later that you'll be prevented from building on the land because it was not zoned for residential purposes. In addition to that, you must also do some on-site searches. This is what I always recommend. Why do I say this? Purchase of the land or acquiring a land, okay, has two key ingredients. One is title, which relates to the documentation. The second is possession, which relates to being on the land. Now, if you buy land simply based on the documentation which is available, but fail to conduct an on-site inspection and on-site research, you may not be aware that the land itself is in dispute and that perhaps there are land guards on the land or that there are two factions or two or more factions fighting over the land. Very often, when you even find out who the owner of the land is, a good lawyer will conduct a further search at the high court or indeed at any court of competent jurisdiction which the land falls under to confirm that there's no pending litigation. So what sometimes happens is that people buy lands which are subject to litigation, but because they have relied on, let's say, a family member and made payments through that person, they have not had the benefit of a lawyer conducting a search to ensure that the land is not subject to litigation. These are just a few of the searches that one can do or the due diligence that one conduct, can conduct. But without conducting due diligence, I'm sorry, you can only blame yourself if you try to 
to acquire land and you face difficulties. Okay, now let, 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 let me tell you, you are the lawyer, but I, as a Ghanaian or of Ghanaian descent, I'll tell you this. Land was sold, land belonged to families, chieftains, etc. So land changes hand. Somebody says, oh, I have land. My grandmother gave me a parcel of land and I'll give you um, an acre, etc., etc." Then you may go and do the registration, write your name on it. You may then, um, it's yours now. And then you've gone abroad. Most people have the land. They've bought the land. They've registered the land. They've done all the things that they have to do, especially the people in the diaspora. And they take it very seriously that this is what I'm coming back to. This is my retirement home. This is my retirement uh, place. And then whilst gone, that's where the problem comes. The problem, the reason for this, this, this uh, uh, show is that the problem comes when somebody has sold that same parcel of land. Sometimes it's the same person who sold it to you. Sometimes it's someone who's been watching the land for a while and realized that there's nobody coming near the land. Nobody's been near it for like six months, one year. Um, and so they sell it to Tom and then they sell it to Jack and then Mary. How do you deal with that? Because as you said, uh, and as I alluded to, sometimes it is a friend, it is a, a, a relative or a stranger. But the system in Ghana, and that's why when you say don't blame Ghana, no, is I'm blaming Ghana because the system is that you 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 lose because is they are saying it's okay, but it's just land. You know, you can't get another one elsewhere. Meanwhile, you've paid for it, and meanwhile, sometimes your name is on the piece of paper because you registered it. The other thing is. Sometimes the whole hula baloo of going to court, you can't go to court. You have to come back to work. The same work that is giving you the money to buy the land. So how then do you claw back that land? Because sometimes it is prime land and it's yours and you want it. Candy, no one, let me tell you this, okay? If you buy land, and you have it fully registered in your name, okay? Yes. No one can change that as far as the paperwork is concerned. Oh, I, what I, happens? I, I, no, 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 no. Please, let, I, let me, you and I, let, no, no, let, no, no, let me no, tell no, you. No, let me no, land. Can, let no, me no, land no, 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 no. I'm speaking. Please. I'm speaking. So <laughs> let me finish making my point. I I, 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 I I have to finish making my point. Okay, The please. point I'm making is this. Mm -hmm. Listen, based on experience, and I have, it has happened, I have several people reach out to me to help them, especially people in the On diaspora. this issue? No, on, on this, this issue. issue. Let me tell you, I'll say 80% of the time when they get to me, yeah. what happens is that when people buy land and they are given the land documents. Yes. They don't register it. It's a it's it's a situation. It's a lot of times it's ignorance. Okay, Most so where people, do you register? No, where? No, that, listen, that, no, let me finish making my point. Okay. So what happens is a lot of people do not register it. Once they get the documents, they assume that I have the documents. It means I have papers to the land you need to have your documents registered just as it is everywhere in the world you have to have your documents registered and more importantly you need to consult a lawyer to help you to do that so i'm telling you that half of the time when people say that oh and i have all the papers to it i just say oh can you send me a copy of the paperwork when they send it to you I can just tell straight by looking at it that the paperwork is not registered. 
then you ask them, why haven't you registered it? They say, oh, when I got the papers, you know, I was traveling or they just sent it to me. So I didn't know I had to register it. This is because what, why I'm saying this is because if you have a land title certificate, if anybody sells the land to somebody else, as far as documentation is concerned, it cannot be changed. Okay. The only way it can be changed is if somebody commits fraud. Let's say they forge your signature or whatever. And that, of course, is, is a crime and that can happen anywhere in the world. So I wouldn't say it's a Ghana thing. Now, when it comes to possession, I say I agree with you to the extent that some people actually buy, register their interest, and then they leave the land. And it sometimes as when they buy it, that area is not developed. So perhaps they see no need to protect the land then because it's undeveloped. And then a few years later, the entire area becomes developed. And then maybe your the land that you have is undeveloped and people want to come and take the land away. Now, what I say to you is, if this is a valuable investment for you, clearly you must take some steps to protect it. You won't buy a vehicle which costs you so much money and just park it in an open space and leave and go to London and then expect that after 10 years, when you come from London, the vehicle will be sitting there in the same condition or waiting for you to drive away. Somebody will find it and at worst will begin to use this as scrap. So I'm saying that if the investment is valuable to you, then you ought to take steps to protect it. And what usually should happen is at the very worst, you can you must wall the property. Um, whether it is it is the right thing to do or not, because maybe you're saying other jurisdictions you may not need to wall the property. If this is a developing country, it's not only Ghana. In the developing world, if there's land, you need to at least wall the land. You need to put a caretaker on the land. Now, sometimes the mistake people make is that when they buy the land, there may even be a caretaker on the land. And then they leave that caretaker on the land. The person has sold you land and you have left his caretaker on the land and gone to London. What is to stop him from selling the land to somebody else? And, and I'm talking about the fact that it is that opportunity exists and it is likely that he may seize he or she may seize that opportunity it's not acceptable at law but in practice we see this happen that same caretaker will assist his, his master to sell the land so please when you buy land you wall it if you are if you you are you can do so put up a small you know, single room, small place, you know, on a very small part of the land, at the very least, and put a caretaker in it, wall it and put a gate on it. When people come to them, people rarely buy land without going to see the land. They will definitely come. When somebody comes to see the land or somebody tries to come and ask questions, that caretaker will call you wherever you are in the world and inform you that some people came here. Then you call your lawyer up and get your lawyer involved. You, you, you may need to put up a sign even on the property to say that this property belongs to you. This is your number. It is not for sale. I mean, these are extra steps you have to take. Of course, I agree with you that ideally there should be no need for you to do all of these. But sometimes you have to do that. Now, when it gets to the issue of possession, and we talk about land guards and so on and so forth, it's an unfortunate development in our country. And um, um, we need to address it. But what usually happens is that a lot of these land guards are being bagged 
by powerful people in the country. And that's why they're empowered to do what they do. And very often they get arrested. And after they get arrested, um, not so long after they, they are released because of the sorts of connections they have or because they are providing similar services to powerful people in other areas. And so those people will always make sure that they don't get into trouble. What am I saying? In summary, I'm saying that you must get your documents fully registered before you can even say that you own the land. The, the people buy land and sometimes they don't even get papers. All they have is a receipt. You ask, they come to you and say, I bought some land and now people have gone on the land. Lawyer, can you help me? I say, can you kindly give me the documentation to the land? Then they say, uh, they will show you a receipt. But you, you and I know that in the UK or in, in Europe or in the US, you would definitely require more documentation than a receipt. So please make sure you have the full set of documentation. You have it fully registered and you have a land title. And then also take steps to protect your land. It's a very important investment for you. And I also urge you, wherever it is possible, look for professional builders. I know that the costs may go up, but what, what is happening in Ghana today is that there are a lot of builders and those builders are, have, are willing to reduce their, their cost of development or construction so that they can get a lot more jobs because when they don't have any jobs, then they can't make any money. So you can negotiate with them, get a professional job done. Don't just rely on family and friends as usual because you can run into a myriad of issues and problems. This is what I advise. But having said all this, I agree that sometimes you will put in everything to make sure that every uh, that you don't encounter any challenges and eventually you still have to deal with with these uh, with these sorts of issues i say get a good lawyer who will help you you get tied up in all sorts of issues if you go the legal way the legal way and you see one of the things as you keep comparing america um, the UK, Europe, and all of that is you buy land, you don't always, you just know that this is my parcel of land. I know a friend of mine bought land the other day and it's, you know, it's in some grotty area. She knows this is her land. People have been fly tipping and putting rubbish on the land and all of that. So it's a discussion that we've been having. She hasn't put a wall around it and she's had that parcel of land for over 10 years. And so now it has become very expensive and she's planning to sell it. So she's, we, we are looking for people to go and clear the land and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, but there was no war around it. It's just there. It's been lying there fallow. Nothing has happened. So if you, if you are comparing, but it looks like it's a very dangerous thing to do if you have land in Ghana because... You need to put a wall around it. You need to put a, a structure, a small structure on it. You need to do this and all of that is fine. If you have registered the land, the land is yours. The latest strategy people are doing is going to land department or any of those land offices and bribing the people to take your name off and put their name on there. Do you know about this? Um, what? What I will say is that it's not easy at all to get that done. That's the first thing that I will say, that um, anybody who creates the impression that there's somebody at the land title registry who can simply just swap names um, um, easily is... Um, is not doesn't know how the system works in fact anybody who acquires land or who has to go through um, the acquisition of land at the land 
registry, you will realize that there are certain processes. It goes, the file goes from one officer to the next officer. There are different divisions, different departments. There are meetings that are held. If you have been issued with a land title certificate, in fact, only one land title certificate can be issued in respect of any property. And therefore, if you have a land title certificate, it is impossible for someone else to have another land title certificate unless the person has done so by fraud, meaning one of the certificates is a fake certificate. If you're talking about crime, crime exists everywhere in the world. And therefore, I will not say categorically that it's, um, it cannot happen in other jurisdictions. I can say that there might be occasions where this sort of practice happens, but it is not pervasive. It's not something that happens every day. Where the challenge is, is that most people do not complete the process or do not even start the process. And some people start the process and there are some payments that need to be made to complete the process. Sometimes people don't follow up to complete the process. And then what happens then is that someone else may also be trying to register that same piece of, the, of land. What we need to do is to make sure that we're consistent and follow through to make sure that um, the process is completed. In terms of someone acting fraudulently, we have the property fraud unit of, of the police service. So the Ghana Police Service has set up a property fraud unit. And if you encounter such a situation, I would say you can first, uh, as a first um, 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 option, speak to them. I mean, I know many disputes that have been resolved simply because the two or more parties contending over land and one party was able to produce documentation, genuine documentation, whereas the other parties didn't have any documentation. But of course, we also know that it is not a foolproof system. And sometimes you have to end up in court. We also know that the court system sometimes takes a very long time for dispute resolution. So um, what I will say is that, yes, there may be instances where some fraud is perpetrated at, I would say, all institutions, private and public institutions, okay? However, anyone who tries to create the impression that it is pervasive in our land system does not know the system because it is not so simple. And I, I say this on authority because I am actually even currently involved in um, a situation whereby a, a second land title certificate has to be issued to the same person because the original one was lost. If you lose your land title certificate, the only way it can be replaced is you have to have it reported to the police. You have to have a police report. It has to be published in the papers. There's a stringent process. Okay, so it's not so simple or easy for people to perpetrate fraud. What is most important is that whenever we have documents to land, please, let's make sure it is fully registered and we obtain a land title certificate. This will minimize any challenges we will face in the future in respect of this land. Okay. I think we have to come back because uh, we, we've gone 50 minutes already and we haven't got anywhere with the questions. I've got one question to ask you, though, which is a man in Atlanta, I think his name is Blackson, Michael Blackson. He said that 
prices of houses in Ghana now are more expensive than houses in Atlanta, America, Atlanta. Now, it is true. Some houses are more expensive than here in the UK. I the, the, Some houses are more expensive than my house here in the UK. Now, why? The majority of people in Ghana, their salaries are, you know, minuscule. And so how does that work? Are you just building houses for foreigners who have money or drug dealers or, you know, that sort of, so that the rest of the country, nobody can afford. You know, it's, it's a question. It's a question. It's not you, but... No, Candy, it's a very interesting question. I know Michael Blackson. I read his views on Twitter yesterday. Um, I was actually, I actually thought for a minute to reply to him. Okay, I spend a lot of time in Atlanta. I don't believe what he says when he says that. I mean, you have to compare apples with apples, okay? If you buy property in a prime area, okay, in, in Atlanta, okay, they, those properties are far more expensive than prime properties in Accra. Okay, I know of condos in Atlanta that are going for 5 million, 6 million, 10 million for a two, like 1,200 square, square meters. You won't get that in Ghana. It will not be that price. So a lot of people are ignorant and I'm sorry that Mr. Michael Blackson um, should join that fray because I would, but again, he's, He's a comedian, so I mean, maybe it wasn't meant to be a serious comment. Okay. But I think that, I mean, if you're comparing, you have to compare apples with apples, okay? It's like people come to visit Ghana. If you go to an expensive restaurant in Ghana and the food is expensive, it's because it's an expensive restaurant. Most people living in the UK don't go to expensive restaurants. So they are comparing ordinary restaurants in the UK with expensive restaurants in, 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 in Ghana. You compare apples with apples, okay? So if you go to an expensive restaurant in the UK, okay, you can buy a bottle of champagne or good wine that may cost you 10,000 pounds, okay? You won't get that in the most expensive re um, restaurant in Ghana. It will, the, bo the bottle may go for at most 2,000 cities, which is not 10,000. So if you compare an average restaurant with an average restaurant here, you will see that the, the prices are lower. If you compare an average house in Ghana with an average house in Atlanta, you will see that the houses in Atlanta cost more but if you <laughs> compare a, um, a house in bucket in the in atlanta okay which is the most expensive area in atlanta and you compare a high-end um, um condo or apartment the value of those properties say i'll, I'll say i'll refer him he should go to saying to to um um, to the St. Charles building or the new buildings that are coming up. That same um, condo is so expensive, there's no property in Ghana that costs that much. Okay. Now, okay. the reason <laughs> why I'll get to the part, yes. I, I, well, we, we, I'll should, try, we, should I'll be, we should speak about things that we know about. So okay. now, the second thing that I issue that I have to raise is, yes, the prices of houses in Ghana are expensive. The reason why, one of the reasons why the prices are expensive is one, because the land itself is expensive. And the reason why the land is expensive is because of the issues that we are speaking about. They are not properly documented, and so registration costs go up. Sometimes it's also a question of availability. Um, but even as far as building is concerned, we don't have standardization. What do I mean by that? If you're going to buy windows, doors, um, and other furnishings, say in the UK, they are standard sizes, okay? 
it's a, it's a standard size of door. And so you get it at a standard price. In Ghana, we don't have standard sizes. So everybody who builds has custom made doors. I'm saying this to show you that the cost of building in Ghana is high because almost every house is a custom built house. The windows have to be specifically or specially ordered. The doors have to be specially ordered. People want Spanish tiles. They want the best Spanish tiles. And they are producing tiles in Ghana today which are good quality and we don't cost that much. But Ghanaian consumers still want Spanish tiles. Okay? So what happens then is that the cost of building goes up. What we need to encourage is the passing of laws which will standardize pricing, sizes of doors. So no longer can... I mean, if you want to build a custom-built house, it will cost you more. If people would build, I mean, just um, standard doors, then we can have a company that produces, let's say, uh, 100,000 doors every day. They are one size, and they know it will sell because people are compelled to, by law, to buy that size of door. You understand? Of course, people will say this will affect the carpenters, because carpenters will not be able to make money by building custom doors. But we have to think about the country as a whole. So standardization must come in windows. You don't have to, people make windows before they go and see the window maker to now make a window that fits that size. Why don't we say a window should be a certain size and then have companies that produce this in mass Okay, and everybody uses that window size. So therefore, the cost economies of scale, that the, the window producer can reduce it because he has produced a lot, he has the machines to produce a lot, and then that can be used. Okay, even building materials, we all want sliding windows, but louver blades are cheaper and are better for us in the tropics because you can keep your room cooler. You, when you open them, there's the, the uh, air circulation and so on and so forth. But we still insist on having certain things in our house because we want our houses to look nice and to be special. And those things raise the price. When they raise the price, then Candy will say, why are the houses expensive? Because the materials we are using are expensive. We don't want to use good quality but cheap materials. I'm sure that when you're building your house, Candy, you want to have, you know, and, and, and all our houses have all this cement, you know, even the walls inside the house. If you go into the UK, the walls inside the house, it's partition, it's wood or some similar material. In Ghana, it's hard cement. Well, all those things raise the prices of our houses. So... Yes, we need to change the way we build, okay, to make it more affordable. And then also access to credit. If you want, as a builder, if you want to build, you have to borrow money from the bank to build. In the UK, I can get a pound loan at maybe 2 3%. In Ghana, I have to pay 11 to 15% on foreign currency. But if I borrow in local currency, I'm going to pay maybe about... 26, 27% on the city. Now, how am I going to get that money back? I have to put it on the price. And the building process may take, let's say, 24 months. The bank is charging me for the money. They're charging interest right from day one. So what it means is that just, let's say, if I budget that I'm going to use three years to even sell the property, to, to build and sell the property, Three years at 25% means that it's 75%. It means that without even trying to make any profit myself, whatever I've used to build a house, I have to now add 75%, which I will give to the bank straight away. And then me, I may also want at the very west, um, even if it's 25%, I want to add it, it's 100%. So if the house actually costs, let's say, 50,000 pounds, straight away, it has to be 100,000 pounds. You understand? I have to double the price. 
and that puts it out of the reach of most people. And then people can't afford to get mortgages because what happens is people's salary levels are so low that if you take the monthly deductions out, they will not be making, they, they don't have enough to pay on those mortgages, you know? So we have a huge housing deficit. But we can't address just one part. We have to address all of these issues to be able to now have what is truly affordable for everyone. And um, I hope that we can have a national debate on it soon and that we can actually begin to implement concrete measures, both from the government and from the private sector, to make sure that it's the cost of building goes down, the cost of access to um, credit to build goes down, whether we create special funds where if you're building, you don't have to pay so much interest on it. And then also even mortgage rates have to go down and people's salaries have to be able to match up to the requirements for these mortgages. So people's salaries have to go up. Well, that's definitely <laughs> very, very important. It's very important that people can afford to pay for mortgages. It's also very important that builders should have cheaper access to credit. It's important that we all have to um, be reasonable in the taste of materials that we want. People go to some of these affordable houses and they're like, no, I don't like this. Um, they use tiles made from Ghana. No, I want Spanish tiles. I mean, your, your salary is barely enough to pay for the mortgage. Why do you want Spanish tiles? You understand? And, you know, everything is custom. These are custom-built houses. Custom-built houses everywhere in the world cost much more. I mean, if you're in the UK and you have to buy land and build a house that you have designed, an architect has designed using your own furnishings, you know that house is going to be very expensive. And we do the same thing here, and yet we say we want it to be affordable. It's impossible. Okay. Okay. I understand. I have a question. And okay. I mean, upon all of this that we've said, coming yes. back to the land issue with the land um, encroachment and land guards and the reselling of land, if you have your registration in front of you, you have gone, you've done all the right legal things, and yet, and then five years down the line or 10 years down the line, you hear that um, somebody is crouching on your land. What are the steps? What do you do? Tell us the, the, the steps. Okay, if you find that somebody has encroached on your land, well, I mean, I've, I've spoken about um, first step, you could look at the property fraud unit of the Ghana Police Service, uh, reporting the case to the police. Um, um, you can, I mean, I would say you should use litigation as a last resort and go into court because of, you know, the attendant delays that could possibly come up. Uh, we know of several instances where people have had to pay more than once in to different people in respect of the same land. And we have also learned about how some families actually also deliberately create the impression that even though you made a payment to somebody in the family, they are, that wasn't the right person. And so the other part of the family are the rightful owners and so you need to pay them i mean these these are all um um i'll say tricks of the trade um you are likely if you have everything documented you know sometimes when people are making payments they don't even get receipts i'll say every step of the process even when you are making payments take pictures as evidence just put at the back of your mind that that acquisition may end up in court one day and that if it does end up in court, you must have sufficient evidence to prove 
that you were a bona fide purchaser for value without notice of a defect or the interest of another party. But, but what if, if yeah what if you bought this land a while ago because that seems to be the problem you bought this a long time ago and now all of these encroachments and things are happening to it so really you didn't have you didn't take a photo but it's registered the land is nicely registered everything is okay but someone's put their cement and things and have started trying to build a house on your land if you go to court and your your title is correct, you will win the case. But how long? People go to court for six years over land that is theirs. That's why I advise that if you buy a piece of land, look at the money that you spend on litigation. Okay, look at the time that you may have to use on litigation. That has the value. I would prefer that you take half of that value wall your land put a caretaker in there so that if anybody starts doing to try to encroach on your land you can stop it before it becomes a problem i don't know it uh, i'm not i'm I not know. satisfied <laughs> i'm not satisfied with your answer because you know if someone came to you and said mr asthma yeah. I bought this, my father bought this land yeah. um, 25 years ago. It was doing yeah. well. Every year I go to Ghana, I visit the land, there's no problem. I have a caretaker who keeps an eye on the land, no problem. And then the past few years, I haven't been able to go. Yeah. And suddenly someone is cro en encroaching on the land. Yeah. Um, How did you find out? somebody told me but what was the caretaker doing why didn't the caretaker tell you well so he must be implicated the point is no, something I'm... has gone wrong yeah but the, if the caretaker is doing what he has to do and 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 some people or you know the caretaker probably also has to be um uh, be paid for their services some people say oh he's been there for a long time or he He's even happy to be there with his family because I've allowed him to be there with his family and his children. So there's no need for me to give him anything. Boom, he has needs. Somebody comes and says, oh, uh, we have bought this land and so and so forth. So get this money and move out. Don't tell anybody because we don't want people to know. He takes the money and he leaves. Or he takes the money and he's quiet. He's not telling you what has actually happened. So... I'm also raising this issue that if you make sure that whoever is a caretaker is somebody who is diligent and loyal, and if need be, please pay them for their services, no matter how small. Don't just assume that because you have given them a place to stay, then that should be enough. You know, when people get tempted by a new buyer with new money, very quickly they forget how you've been helpful. So that's something that you need to keep at the back of your mind. Yeah. You see, this is unsatisfactory to the people who have this problem. The land has been encroached on. They've had this is their land. They know it. It makes you become distrustful. You said all the right things, but there is always the the people are stealing land. People are reason. The point is, it's happening. It's happening. What I'm people, saying is that people people are not people are not using the right channels to acquire land. So half of sometimes when you try to purchase a certain land, you will be warned: don't buy land here. And I've seen it happen so many times. People don't seek advice. You know, there's an area called uh, Atomic. Yeah. All the land in that area or most of the land in that area belongs to the ghana atomic commission if you go there today people have built there are more there are thousands of houses in that area all the people there don't have any documentation you know i want you to understand that sometimes people's ears are hard okay people don't people are difficult because 
you know that there's an area near CSIR, near American House. It's called CSIR. All the land there was acquired by Nkrumah for CSIR. CSIR has not sold the land. They cannot sell the land. People have been told that the chiefs are getting the land back. And you see prominent members of society, people who should know better. Okay? Sometimes even lawyers and judges. Okay? And they built houses in this area, but they have no documentation. You understand what I'm saying? So let's not only blame um, the families and the chiefs and so on and so forth. I'm saying that we ourselves sometimes may need to be more diligent when we are buying land. We need okay. to do conduct because there are so many areas where the land is a no-go zone. It belongs to the government of Ghana. And yet chiefs are telling people the government is going to return the land or in some cases they have returned it. We are just doing a transfer, which is also not true. And people who should know better won't check. They say, don't tell anybody. And they see that the price of the land is cheap. They go and buy the land. And then tomorrow they have a problem. Then they will come and tell Candy. And then Candy will invite Kofi to come on the show. And then we'll keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, but, you know, yes. And all of that happens. It is true. But, you see, the problem is, as you said, that is why people in the diaspora which is uh, america and europe uk and all will say it is ghana because trust me at this point as we are sitting here with candy inviting kovi onto her show it's because people are even mistrustful of the police they feel that they are here so they don't know many people there are people there are people who they don't eat. sometimes people for even forget that you bribery is 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 illegal and yet bribery now is like a habit it's like drinking water so the slightest thing you want you need to bribe somebody to do something people don't trust the police the police are in cahoots with the thief so how then the thief of your land i'm not saying the robber in the town i don't know anything i'm not talking about that i'm only talking about land today and I'm telling you that people feel it's not um, this is if so bad or anything. This is the feeling of the people in the diaspora that they do the right thing because that's what they know. In this country, you are right. You go, you want to buy a house, you see a, a, a lawyer, he does your conveyancing, people do search. In fact, there are some people, I remember one of the houses I bought, we did our own search, but you know, I mean, that was when we were young and flighty. Right now, if I'm buying a house, I'm not going to do my own search because there are lawyers and people who do these things. So it, it is normal. Thank there are you. lawyers Thank everywhere you. who do this job in Thank Ghana. In the way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> in Ghana. You, 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 we are not used to the lawyer bit because it is always exchange of, okay, I've got land here. I'll say, oh, I, my brother bought it. About, you know. People don't want to pay for these services. No, People it's because you don't advertise. And when you do, good lawyers are very expensive. It's off the scale. And you, We're you not sometimes. We're allowed to advertise. I hope you know that by our rules of etiquette, we're not allowed to advertise. Um, all professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, we're not allowed to advertise. So that's why we don't advertise. Okay, so whilst you are not allowed to advertise, we can say, oh, go and see Jando um, Associates. And I, I can do word of mouth. Right, uh, people, all you people watching here, go to Jando and Associates. He has a whole department that deals with land. And it's land anywhere. It can be Navrongo, Kumasi, Accra. He is the man. He is yes. my land champion. He's going to do mine for Definitely. me. We have so, an office in Kumasi as well. They have a la office. an office in Kumasi. They have an office in Accra. Yeah, in fact, if it's Lometogo, you, they will go with you. So... Candy. Oh, Candy. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, but the point I am making is there are people who have land, who've bought the land, who've registered the land, and people are encroaching, and yet the law then becomes lopsided. If things were straight, in this country, things are straight. If I am buying a house and somebody else is buying, it's called gazon. You know, if you give the higher money and you're, but once I've paid for it, it is totally illegal for somebody else to do anything with the land. I said, my friend bought land. This is my friend, my personal friend. She's bought a land by beside some grotty garage and things. People have used, they've thrown rubbish there, but the land has been there for over 10 years before my mother died. We all went to go and see the land. Today she's selling it because it's now the money is of the scale and we are all excited for her. So I'm telling you that the fact, the mere fact that you are suggesting that we have to even build a wall around the, the, the land is a problem because it people are stealing with impunity and the law is all over the place on it. Look, if people steal my land, I want them to go to prison and their legs cut off. This is what I want. Because why would you do this? Eh? Maybe I bought the land the day I gave birth and I want my baby to come and build on the land because England is getting difficult and by the time they are grown enough to go and settle. Then somebody goes to go and build on my land. Why? So it, it, it's just an example. But the point is, we shouldn't allow people to do that. We shouldn't. And we shouldn't make excuses for them either. I totally, I, I kind of agree with you. But all <laughs> I have to say to you is that if you have something valuable, okay, and everything valuable to you, is kept in a safe place. I can see why you would put your earrings in a jewelry box, which you put in a safe place. In much the same way, when you have land, it's not okay to assume. I think that uh, very often we put um, some less, less or less of value to land than we ought to. But it might be your most important investment. And therefore, I don't, I, I don't see anything wrong in, 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 in taking steps to protect it. I mean, if you had a house on it, you would take steps to either put security in it or at least put some security wiring around it or take some steps to protect it. You see, you also have to think about the fact that, you know, leaving your land unattended to for me, is one of the biggest challenges that we have. When you buy your land and you leave it unattended to and travel to the UK and the area becomes developed, you alone have not developed your land. Then all kinds of miscreants and bad people will come and be staying on your land, okay, and posing a threat to other people in your area. So... There's also the lopsided, the downside to it, that if you buy land and you leave it there for 10 years, like you're saying, your friend's land has been turned into like a rubbish um, um, uh, area. And that's bad for our society because that area is not zoned for a rubbish area. So I also want to urge you to tell your listeners and your viewers that when you buy land, please don't leave it unattended to for so long. Okay, today we have a system where people do joint venture projects. If you don't have money to develop it now, there are developers who are willing to develop part of it and give you a developed property on part of it. Take advantage of that. Okay, because leaving your land that you bought 10 years ago um, when the area wasn't developed, now the area is developed. People are using it for garbage. Um, other um, criminals may be using it, staying there and, 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 you know, causing havoc, you know, which is not good. So please, we also have a duty to develop that land. 
Do you want me to say anything more? <laughs> no, no. I think we, we've exhausted, we've kind of exhausted it to a certain point. I mean, there were many questions, but I think it, they are all interspersed in what we've talked about so far. Yeah, sure. I mean, I did try and research the new land law. I didn't know about the old land law, so I tried to research the new land law. And the thing is, the question people have asked about 10 people asked me on WhatsApp and even on, on, on um, uh, Facebook was the law itself. Is it even, does anyone adhere to the law when it comes to land laws? You know, bribery, people who take over other people's land have money because they don't own the land, but they have money to bribe someone to do this, do this. So people are just, um, it, it, it's crazy. You know, I mean, yes, there is a legal recourse, but I think unless there is a deterrent, unless something happens where you can say, take them physically and put them all in jail, this is going to keep going on. And we are going to be speaking English, but I, people need I to go to prison. I think we have we can all start one by one by refusing to bribe anyone. But if, if you don't all... bribe, you won't get anything. No. So are you'll you be sitting there. Are you suggesting therefore that we should bribe? No. I am saying emphatically that I may stand there and say I'm not going to bribe, and then somebody else will come and bribe and take and go. And so that's I will I'm, be the loser. That's why I'm saying that let's use your platform. Let's all collectively agree that we'll use whatever resources are available to us to fight bribery and corruption. Okay? It's not, we, we accept that these things are with us. And somehow we feel that we cannot make any um, significant changes um, by our isolated events. But I can tell you, and you know, through one man, sin came into the world, and through another man, the world was saved. And in that same way, if one person decides to lead this anti-bribery corruption and all the ills of society in discipline, and let it be said, and let the books and the history reflect, that Kiki was the one who led the fight against uh, <laughs> bribery and corruption. I am leading the fight against bribery and corruption. Thank you very thank much you that very you much. have acknowledged my war. It is a one woman war. But I think other people will join me because it's crazy. I don't have to bribe anyone to buy a house or land where I'm sitting in this country. And it's the same in America. You go, you find a prize, you find a mortgage, you do your thing. So the complications and the, you know, even before you can even do something, you have to bribe to get the form, you have to give money to get, it's too much. It's doing everybody's head in. Ghana is just a, like a morass of no, confusion. But, but, yeah, those are your statements, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my, you, you're the lawyer, so I'm the wayward one and I'm saying it, but no, 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 you are my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I mean I mean we all know that there are challenges with bribery and corruption. Um and that we need to find ways to address this and to remove this canker from society. That's not in doubt. Um so I mean I'm saying let's all start in our own small way to make a difference and we will we will achieve success if we all one by one um make a contribution it may not be able to completely eliminate it but we can significantly reduce it i think one of the things i can tell my listeners is listeners we are all in this deep confusion of land issues etc especially us who are in the diaspora I think that if you have money to be able to bribe someone, give it to a lawyer. Don't bribe. Give your money to the lawyer. And then he will do the legal thing. And you lawyers too, you take too long. You have to always think that these people haven't got the time. 
So you have to deal with the issue, give them back their lands, and let's go home. That's all we want. Iki, I don't know which lawyers you've been dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> I can only speak for myself, yes. <laughs> I have never had to use a lawyer before, but I'm feeling a, I'm about to. And okay. so, you know, of course, I mean, me and you have been having some chats, but, you know, I mean, you do know what I'm talking about, though. And I think the listeners have an idea of what I'm saying as well, that it is a war. It is a problem which we need to address and it needs to be sorted out because regardless of everything that we've said here, it is still quite painful if a parent, a mother, this person buys some land somewhere to give to their child and it's all gone, you know, because a thief came to steal it. How can a, how can a person steal land? I, I mean, you know. Anyway, I want to thank you so much for coming on to my show, people. This was Mr. Kofi Asma. I'm going to give you his whole detail so that, and he is a co-chair of the Ghanaian Hungarian Business Council. He is a lawyer, serial entrepreneur, and is deeply committed to narrowing the divide between developed countries. That's America, Europe, UK, and, and emerging nations, that's Africa and by promoting more foreign direct investment from the US and Europe into Africa. So, and he's the director of the African Economic Development Center of Atlanta in Georgia, America. Now, Kofi Asma is a member of the American Bar Association, Ghana Bar Association, International Bar Association, and a proud member of the Rotary Club. So it seems like he's very connected. He knows a lot of people. He can do things and shake things. He is my lawyer. He is. He was introduced to me by a very, very, very good friend. And, you know, I, he has not failed us yet. Um, I want you all to you know check out his services i did put it on um he's been on my show before i put it on there i will put it on again or he can put it on himself so that if you are in ghana or you're not in ghana but you need to see he's got international offices all over the place and as i said i've said even in lometsogo ivory coast he's he can deal with it for you he's done it i know it and so please i'm not advertising i am just saying that this is yeah. a man who does all of these things and he has tried to educate us on land issues land acquisition land laws and i think we all need to go back to the drawing board and look at our papers and look and see where whether where our lands are registered and you know what we need to do and who we need to see. If you have a problem, see him. He is not expensive because he's trying to help the people in the diaspora. So, you know, do not worry yeah. too much. Actually, Kiki, um, I, I haven't told you, but um, I've also been appointed as the African Union Diaspora African Forum Economic Counselor. Hey! Um, um, so um, that's... Um, means i'm working more with the diaspora now and people I'm very yes he's in working more with the diaspora i want you all African to be Union. aware that this is a man who can help you in a lot of things in finance in acquisition in you know and, and you left the motown the Accra part out of it yes oh <laughs> i i try not to do that but if you like okay. this is this is my schoolmate, and uh, of whom I'm very proud of. Very As you can see, the, the black and white is prominently featured yes. around me. Indeed. The world, okay. your shirt, you know. 
<laughs> Thank you very much for having Congratulations me. Congratulations on your new position as your, you know, added on. Um, I am very proud of you. I am increasingly and continually proud of you. And I want to thank you. I'm very grateful indeed that you came because all that we've spoken about now, it, it, people charge for it. But you are do. doing it free. So these people, this is the beginning of it all. Um, your classmate Yvette Markai yes. says hello. Yes. yes. My so, birthday hey. has the event, yes. Yeah, and, and a lot of people are um, saying hello to you on, on Facebook. You will see it all when you go on there. So okay. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you and very much. Yes, please stay on, on while I say bye-bye to my people. My people, okay. we have been on longer than I thought, but it was just so riveting we could not not leave some of these issues unturned. We will need to have another chat with Mr. Asma soon because our issue is not finished. We haven't finished. We in the diaspora have so much to talk about. And our problem is we have so for so long been listening to relatives, brothers, this, that, no more. We're going to go the right way. We're going to speak to lawyers. We're going to speak to people who are trying to put us all on the straight and narrow. I want it for myself and I want it for you. So I want to share what I know with you. So people, bye-bye, be well. Thank you so much for staying on and watching the show. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Bye. Yeah.